In this math lesson, we'll be looking at the angles in a circle. So we want to look at theorems that are associated with the angles in a circle. So now we'll be starting with theorem one. It says that the angle subtended by an arc of a circle at the center is twice that which it subtends at any point on the remaining part of the circumference. So we're going to explain this theorem using these diagrams. So what we are saying now is this. You have an arc. So let's say this is an arc AB now. You will remember that an angle is formed when two lines intersect. So you see that the lines that will form an angle at this point of the circumference. So there's an angle formed. So this angle formed, of course, is forming on this point Q. On this point Q on the circumference. So you'll agree with me that these two lines forming this angle are coming in from this arc AB. So they, they take their source or their origin from this arc AB to meet at point Q to form an angle. That means that this angle formed, if you want, you can call it angle A. You might decide to name it if you so wish. Maybe you call it angle A, for instance. So this angle formed at this point is an angle that is subtended by arc AB. Now, you'll also see there is an angle that is formed here. This is this O is the center of this circle, okay? Now, an angle is formed at this center. So there's an angle formed here, probably an obtuse angle. So what the theorem is saying is that this angle formed here, if you wish, you can call it angle B. All right. So we're now saying that this angle B, which is formed at the center, is two times, that is two times, this angle formed on the part of this circumference, which is A. So the angle formed at the center B is equal to two times A. So that's what the theorem is actually telling us. Using the angle notations to write it, we can say that this angle formed here, let's call it an obtuse angle. So this angle, this obtuse angle, which is now angle, the obtuse angle AOB. So this obtuse angle AOB is two times the angle formed at the other point on the circumference. So this particular angle formed here. So now this angle formed here is angle AQB. So that's what actually the theorem is saying. So but the most important thing is that in this diagram, we are talking about the obtuse angle. So this particular angle formed at this center is two times the angle formed at this point of the, on this point Q, which is lying on the part of the circumference. And this angle is formed by, is subtended by this minor arc here. So this is formed by this minor arc AB. Then the same analysis is also, the same analysis will also hold in the second diagram. So in the second diagram, you see that we have a major arc here. So there's an arc that is larger now. You can see that this is a major arc. There is an angle formed from this major arc. So this angle is formed here. So there's an angle formed here. So these are the angle that is formed on the part of the circumference. But before talking about the angle, we look at the center. You see there is an angle that is formed at the center. Here now in this particular figure, we're interested in the reflex angle formed here. You see now, we're interested in this reflex angle. So we're not talking about this particular one. That is not the angle we are talking about. But we are talking about the reflex angle. So now this reflex angle now, so we use the word reflex so that we can make a distinction between the other angles we have talked about. So here you have a reflex angle. So this reflex angle, AOB again, so we are talking about AOB will now be equals to two times the angle formed at the part of the circumference, which is this angle. So you see that this arc, remember that this is a major arc. Okay, so now this is a major arc, and you see that the formation of this angle now, we're indicating it with this arc, which corresponds to this major, which corresponds with, with this major arc. Then the angle at the center we are talking about is this angle now. And you see the formation of the angle, the arc also corresponds with the major arc. So that's why we are talking about that reflex angle. So now, mention about this reflex angle is two times the angle formed here, which is now 2AR, 2ARB. So that is the angle we are talking about. So that's what the theorem is saying, that the angle 
that is the angle subtended by an arc of a circle at the center is twice that which is subtended at any point on the remaining part of the circumference. Then you can also see it in the other way around in the other figure. Here now we also talk about the obtuse angle here. So here we talk about the obtuse angle because the angle formed here, the angle formed on this part of the circumference, the lines that form this angle is coming from this minor arc, this minor arc AB. So that's why we are talking about the smaller angle here at the center, which is the obtuse angle. Now, that obtuse angle is the same obtuse angle now. That obtuse angle AOB is what we are now saying that is two times the angle at the point on the circumference, on the part of the circumference, which is this particular angle, which we will now call angle AQB. So in whichever way you go, the angle subtended by an arc of a circle at the center is twice that which is subtends at any point on the remaining part of the circumference. That's what we are saying. So you, or in all the subsequent videos now, we look at examples that we can now apply this theorem. But I'll conclude by saying that here, we say theorem 1. It mustn't be theorem 1. It could be theorem anything. But the most important thing is that you understand the theorem that is involved in a circle. So the issue is being able to understand this theorem, see how it is applied. And that's what is important. So it mustn't be theorem 1, theorem 2, or whatever. So that's what we are saying. So now we look at this example. It says in the diagram below, O is the center of the circle through the point L, M, N. Then if angle M, N, L is 74 degrees, then angle M, N, L is 39 degrees, of course, as shown in the diagram below. We are to calculate angle L, O, N. So the angle we are, look we are looking at is the angle formed at the center of this circle. That is the angle L, O, N. Now, if you remember the diagram we had when we were talking about the angles in a circle, you remember our theorem that the angle at the center is two times the angle subtended or the angle at any point on the remaining part of the circumference. So this angle we are looking at, which is that the angle at the center, should be two times the angle at the point of the circumference. So this angle now should be two times this angle at the circumference. So what we now have is that the angle at the center, which we, the angle we are looking for, this angle, L-O-N. Please, you remember the sign for an angle. Someone might decide to say angle L-O-N and indicate the cap here at the center and write it in this form and say this angle L-O-N. So it depends on choice. Okay, so having said that, we now move ahead. So now, this angle L-O-N, which is the angle we are looking for, should be two times the angle at the circumference, which should be now two times angle LMN. That is this particular angle. Okay, so that's what we have. But now, how do we find this particular angle? How do we find it? You remember that the whole of this is a triangle? This is a triangle. So now, we use the idea that the sum of angle in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, this angle LMN, if you want, you can call it A. So if you call it A, now you see that this angle A plus the, uh, this angle 74 degrees plus the other angle, which is 39 degrees, the whole of this now should give us 180 degrees. I will give the reason the sum of angle angles in a triangle is equal to 180 so that is the reason so remember that so you remember that in a situation like this any statement you make you give the reason so now with this now you find out that the value of angle a should be equal to 180 degrees minus the remaining of this 74 degrees plus 39 degrees so now we add up this and see what we have so we have 180 now, 74 plus uh, 39, so this will give us 113 degrees. So what do we have next? So this should give us uh, 67 degrees, so we subtract this and we have 67 degrees. So the angle here now, the angle at this point is uh, 67 degrees. So now, by this argument, which we are given by our theorem, 
So we can repeat it again and say that this angle now, the angle at the center, which is, that is this angle O. If you remember the diagram we had before, if you want, you can put this diagram in this form. Okay, so you remember that the angle we are talking about is this angle, which is the same obtuse angle. I remember the theorem that this angle, which is at the center, is two times the angle at any other part of the circumference. So that's what we have, so that this angle LON is equal to two times angle LMN. And our reason is that angles in a circle. So you can use this to just give a short statement. Our angles are the center. Angles are the center. So angle at the center, not angles. Okay. So angle at the center is enough reason. So now with this, now the angle LON is what we are looking for. So angle LON is equals to 2 times the angle at the center, which we got as a 67 degrees. So we now have this 2 times 67 degrees. And of course, what do we have? That will give us a 134 degrees. So the angle we are looking for, we can now say therefore this angle LON, which is the angle we are looking for, is equals to 134 degrees. And that is our final answer.